Hey digital fam, my name is John D. Saunders and in today's digital block, we talk about how to analyze your online competition in minutes. Let's go ahead and destroy this competition. I know, I know, you're a business owner. You don't have a ton of time on your hands to be playing around with all these different tools. If you're a small business, you probably have even less downtime as you most likely wear a ton of hats. So in today's digital block, I wanted to show you quickly how to analyze the competition. Now, this is a quick overview to give you a general understanding of the metrics and KPIs that websites use to rank and perform in the online space. Basically, I wanted to provide you with some tidbits and takeaways you can use to capitalize on the competition and outperform them using two very unique and free tools. All right, let's dig in. All right, so let's say our company sells men's shaving products and we want to look up other competitors to see what they're doing in the space. Now, we might not necessarily want to copy what they're doing, but to get a general idea on their backlinks, their organic traffic, that can kind of give us a benchmark of where we should move going forward. So let's look at Harry's.com. They sell premium men's shaving products. So the first thing we want to do to initiate our uh, competitive analysis is go to semrush.com. This website and platform is awesome. We use it on a daily basis to look at competitive data for our client. With that being said, you can put in your domain, your keyword or URL of who you want to get competitive information on. So let's do Harry's. Once you do that, it'll bring up a dashboard. Now we're in the free version just so we can show you guys how much wealth of information you can get with not even paying anything. When it comes up, it's going to show you organic search. So organic search is based on how many people are putting in keywords or actually going directly to the website. So 106,000 people a month, great numbers. Uh, paid search, this is how much paid search they're getting. So they're getting about 10,000 from Google AdWords. It also gives a traffic cost, 41,000 they're spending every month. So, you know, as a small business, you might not be able to afford that much, but at least this gives you an average amount of how much the big dog are playing with, right? So next, we'll look at backlinks. They have 4,900 backlinks. If I scroll a little bit more, organic keywords, it tells us where we're ranking the most. US, of course, is 62%. They're a US-based company. Ads keywords, where they're using their targeting ads, which is great. And then this graph, which is super important, shows their traffic over time with organic and paid. So as you can see, organically, they've grown exponentially. With that being said, since they're getting organic sales, their paid is also going to rise as well. If we scroll down a little bit more, we can see their top organic keywords that are driving traffic. Okay, of course, number one is their business name. That's usually the case. Harry's, position one, volume 33,000. So it's about 33,000 individuals coming to the site based on just that keyword alone. Now, if they wanted to pay for that keyword, since they're the business name and they own that, it would cost about $1.65. And that, that derives about 25% of their total website traffic. Now, another cool tool on this is to see main organic competitors. We can see other competition in the space and how they're performing. So Dollar Shave Club is another shaving company. They actually do monthly subscriptions as well. And they have about 389 competitive keywords with a total of 7,300 search engine keywords. Now, if we scroll down a little bit here, branded search is just branded keywords like Harry's, Harry Shave Cream is accounting for 65,000 hits on the site every month. All right, so once you have an understanding of the dashboard, go ahead and hit organic research. That'll take you to the positions page. Now, you'll be able to see the keywords that are driving the most traffic, but you can only see up to the top 10 because this is, a, of course, a free account, right? So what I would do is hit organize by traffic percentage. That way you can see the keywords that are driving the most traffic to the website. If we look on this, we can see that the keywords are Harry's, Harry's, Plural, Harry, Razor, Harry's.com. So these are all branding keywords that are driving the most traffic. That's because of all the marketing, the videos, the Facebook ad content that they're promoting is driving people to type it in on their search bar for them to arrive at the website, right? So this keyword alone is bringing them 24%, which we saw on the homepage. Now, if we scroll up a little bit more, we can see that they're ranking well for 4,300 keywords. That's bringing them 106,000, of course, of their organic and the cost is about 281,000. That's the estimated price of organic keywords in Google AdWords. So for example, if they were to pay for all these keywords instead of getting with this organic traffic, 
it'd be a quarter of a million dollars, which is pretty insane. Now we're able to see also how the keywords rank. And as you can see around July, 2015, maybe they hired an SEO team to help them out or a strategist, but their ranking skyrocketed. So that tells us that at a specific time, they might've been running a campaign or it might've got to see money to invest in their marketing strategy. And it just gives you a cool kind of general idea of what's going on behind the scenes. Now, backlinks are super important to your SEO as they solidify your rank and tell Google and other search engines that you are a major player in the space, especially if you have high ranking websites that have high page scores linking back to you that tells that you're a resource in that certain space. So let's take a look at harrys.com backlinks so we can one, take a look and understand what websites they're linking back from. And two, as a competitor, you can reach out to some of these websites to get a backlink on there as well. So here on the dashboard, we see there's 4,900 backlinks, 591 referring domains. That just means that it's 591 specific websites that are providing these 4,900 backlinks. If we scroll down a little bit more, we can see the domain TLD. The domain TLD is just the top level domain. Uh, .com, of course, is the biggest one, and that's the most popular and the one that you really want. .net is really good, too, and .org is good as well. But we can see that most of them are coming from .coms. If we scroll a bit more, we can see that they're referring domains by country. Now, this is good. Since they're a U.S.-based company, if they had a lot of backlinks in Europe or Russia or any other areas, that would tell us that a lot of these are you know, spammy links. Since they're from the U.S., there's 434 mostly, for the most part, coming from here, we can see that those are mostly organic, rich backlinks. Now, if we want to see the specific backlinks that they're using, all we have to do is click this link here. All right, once you do that, it'll organize all the backlinks based on page score, so you can see their highest ranking pages, right? So what this tells us is they have backlinks from these websites that have a pretty decent page score. Page score is about zero to 100, 100 being you know a flawless website. And that tells us that they have links from these websites. So as a competitor, you can also reach out to these websites, um, performing some link building initiatives to get links from those same sites so that you can one, raise your page score and your SEO, and two, use that as a catalyst to jumpstart your link building strategy. Now that's a totally different beast. We won't get into that on this episode, but we will get into it later. So now that we have that, Let's look at one more piece of data on SEMrush to get a general idea. All right, let's look at advertising research. Advertising research is cool because we can see what they're running on AdWords, right? So if we scroll, we can see paid search positions. For Razor, they're running an ad position two. The volume is about 90,000 and the cost per click is about $10. So on the AdWords spectrum, it's pretty expensive. One, it's a short tail keyword. It's very broad, so it's going to be expensive because you're gonna have tons of competitors. However, they have the money to afford a 41,000 a month AdWords budget. So I'm pretty sure that they can afford $10 a click for that high level keyword. Now that's bringing them 12% of their traffic. They're also bidding on their own name. Now, if you're in this space, you might have other competitors bidding on your keyword so that when you come up organically, they're trying to get that paid spot right above you to steal those clicks. So you have to bid on your own keyword in some cases. Of course, Shave Club, Razors, Dollar Shave Club are also important. But this is great, again, because it tells you their average cost per click, how much they're paying, uh, how much traffic each one's building them. So you can use this as a basis to build your own campaign. So some main takeaways from this overview of what our competitors are doing include their level of organic search, how much they're spending on paid search, what keywords they're ranking, what main backlinks they're using to give them good rankings. It just gives you a great overall view of your competitors, how you position yourself online, and what benchmark you can use to move forward. Okay, so let's look at one more tool. So the first thing you want to do is go to builtwith.com. Now, what this site does is break down the composition of what a website's using, meaning the tools, the content management system, basically every aspect of the website broken down into bite-sized chunks so you can see what specific software or plugins they're using on their site. So myself, I'm a big fan of Neil Patel. He is another marketer, really high-level marketer, cool guy. I like to see the things that he does on his site because you know I have admiration for the guy, right? 
So I want to see what kind of plugins he's using, what kind of tools he's using. This is just an overview of his site, right? It's mostly a blog about things going on in the marketing industry. So with that being said, I'm going to take his URL and I'm going to copy it and put it right here. So it'll break it down by section, name servers, email service, SSL certificate. This is all great stuff, right? So the main things that I usually look at when I want to do a competitive analysis of a website and what they're using is their content management system, meaning how their website's built, how they're using it to build out content pages and things of that sort. So he's using WordPress, which is a well-known CMS or content management system. If I scroll down a little bit more, I can see that he uses Facebook custom audiences. Basically, that takes his email list, scrubs it against Facebook, and he's able to target those individuals via Facebook ads. So that tells me, okay, as a marketer, he's using custom audiences. That's something that maybe I can use as well, which we do use. Um, if I keep going, analytics and tracking is important as well. He's using Google Analytics. He's using the upgraded Universal Analytics, so he has more data, as well as Optimizely. So this delivers uh, digital experiences based on the browser that they're using, and you can A-B test those. So that's another tool that I could look into to use on my site as well. If I scroll a little bit more, Omniture is another analytics platform that's using really high intelligence stuff, great strategies for marketing. Now, if I keep scrolling a little bit more, JavaScript libraries don't really have to worry about that for um, on a marketer level. If I keep going down a little bit more, I can see the widgets that he's using. So for widgets, he's using Tuomoji, WordPress plugins, and Polylang. He probably has more widgets that built with isn't able to pull, but that's okay. Let's keep going. All right, keep going. Okay, so we have a basic understanding and idea of what tools and widgets he's using on his site. I want to thank you guys again for watching the Digital Block on 5-4 Digital's YouTube channel. If you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe below right here and have an awesome day. Peace.